Hi, and welcome to the tutorial on how to use our stage two baby carrier. So there's quite a huge difference between our stage one and our stage two. Our stage one is designed to be used from newborn to 12 kilograms or 14 months, whichever comes first. And the stage two carrier is, is designed to be used from around about the nine month mark um, or around about nine kilos. However, with that said, your baby's legs do need to be long enough to fit out the sides of the seat of the stage two baby carrier. And that's quite a big difference to our stage one baby carrier, which I will show you now, because our stage one baby carrier is got a seat with a string across the bottom. So as you can see, if I hold them up against each other here, this one has got a string. It stretches out all the way, They're almost the same width as the stage two, the stage two is slightly wider and it can be pulled in. So this is why this one can be used from newborn because a newborn baby, if we pull this to the tightest position and tie it over here, we can see that this would easily support a newborn baby's bum. So you'd put the bum over here and the little legs can come out the sides and wrap back up underneath the bum if they need to because when small uh, newborns are born, they often sit in that froggy position and they the hips are still quite tight so we don't want to overstretch the hips but we do want the feet to be on the outside of the carrier so there's no extra pressure on those little newborn feet by being squashed inside underneath their bum so that's the diff the biggest difference between the stage one and the stage two the stage one you can also only use on the front and it's got a crisscross back you can refer to our stage one tutorial for more information on the stage one and with the stage two you can use it on the front or the back but as you can see your baby has to be big enough for the legs to fit out the sides here. So even if your baby reaches the nine month mark, um, sometimes your baby's legs are still not long enough. So the way to test if your baby is ready to go up to stage two, put them in the stage one carrier if you have one and pull the string to the widest position. And if your baby is comfortably sitting and they're sitting in that nice, nice ergonomic position with their bum um, like that and then their legs coming out the sides so it kind of looks like an M position if you trace the line from their bum to their knees and down if their legs are able to hang straight down it means that their legs are long enough to also fit into this carrier comfortably and you can upgrade to this carrier so there's quite a lot of stuff to go through in the stage 2 carrier it's designed for a toddler body and of course it's going to be worn on the front or the back so there's a lot of different adjustments that you can do. So this video, I'm going to break into um, different pieces so that you can um, see the different settings that we've got on this carrier, because there's quite a lot. So first of all, just to go through what the carrier looks like, it's basically got two shoulder straps. It's got a body panel. It's got a big pocket. There's a, there's a zip which goes um, all the way around for the big pocket, and you can put stuff inside it. There's a zip inside the big pocket, which I'll show you how that works. And that's basically to shorten the body of this carrier. So when your baby is still a toddler, like nine, well, not, not yet a bigger toddler, like a nine months up to maybe a year and a half, you'll probably use the zip to shorten the carrier. And then as they get older, you can let that out. So they've got the extra length. And then inside this pocket here, we've got a little sleep hood. Um, and this is slightly different to the stage one hood because it's elasticated and um, your baby's got head control now. However, if they fall asleep, especially on your back, you're going to need to give them head support so that if their head falls backwards, this is going to catch their head nicely. So I'll show you how this works as well. Then you've got the waistband. The waistband is actually exactly the same as the stage one waistband. So nothing changes there. So you've got the buckle, you've got the safety elastic and you've got the um, buckle on the other side which secures it so we start out with the baby carrier I've just hung it over my body so you can see we put the waistband onto our waist against our body and I'm going to drop the carrier down now then I'm going to swing the body of the carrier around me grab the webbing on the side and pull this side of the buckle through the safety elastic and just secure it and then i tug on this webbing here to tighten it around my waist now i've got the carrier hanging forward over me so before i put my demo doll into the carrier i want to show you the first thing that you need to adjust and this is especially if your baby is um around 10 9 10 months 
or probably up to a year and a half, you'll more than likely be using the zip inside this big pocket. So what you do is you unzip this big pocket all the way before you put your baby in and you'll see that there is a zipper over here. You can see there's a zip here and we're going to connect that zip to this zipper over here, to the slider, and then we're just going to pull it all the way across like you would zip a jacket. I haven't done that properly. Give me one second. Make sure it's all the way in to the end, like you would zip a normal jacket. And then you just zip it closed and you pull it. And now it's closed. So that has now shortened the carry. If we look on the inside, it has made a little fold and it's a very neat fold difficult for me to show you like this but it's a very neat fold it's not going to cause any um, un uncomfortable feeling for your baby then you can just zip that pocket closed so now I'm going to grab my doll and basically you put your baby exactly like you would use the stage one you put your baby against you you make sure their legs are open uh, this doll is definitely too small for this carrier as you can see the legs do not fit out the sides, um, they're way too short. So I don't have a bigger baby to display, to show you this, so I'm just using this doll. Put your baby against you and you just grab this top of the carrier, pull it up, and then you're going to put your arm around your baby, hold your baby at all times, grab one shoulder strap, put it over your arm, swap arms, grab the other shoulder strap, put it over your arm, and now there's a few ways to do this. So this is the way that I like the best. So I make sure to start out with, we've got a tightening strap here. I keep this loose. And then I make sure on my back of my shoulder strap here, I've got this loose. And I've got a little bit of extra webbing here. So this can be adjusted and pulled, okay? So I've still got some extra space here. Same thing on the other side. And then you'll see what we need to do now is we need to secure this buckle at the back actually need to undo this. This is from my last time I used it so that I can reach it. Okay, so now you hold your baby. What I used to do with my son was I would grab here, would reach back while it's loose to this buckle and I'd hold that and then I'd do the same over here. So I don't let go of the carrier and then I just reach back, flip it and pull it slightly. Now my baby is not gonna be able to fall out, but this is obviously still way too loose. So the baby is falling away from my body. What I do now is I can pull on this webbing and just pull it towards the buckle to tighten. And I can do the same on this side. Pull it down and tighten. So now you can see if I turn around that I've got a nice H shape on my back, like a capital H. And what we're looking for is we want this strap here to be in the middle of our shoulder blades. We don't want this strap to be up against our neck over here because that's where the weight will be held. And we also don't want it to be underneath too low over here because then what's going to happen is these shoulder straps are going to sit like that. And that's obviously not what you want. So it just takes a little bit of adjusting. So this is another way to put your stage two baby carrier on. If you don't feel confident reaching back and you don't have the mobility to grab that buckle and do it the way I've just showed in the video, in the previous video, then this is a way that um, some people prefer. So they would basically, you've got these buckles on the side. Instead of keeping those buckles clipped, you can start with them unclipped. But what you do is you keep this buckle that would go at the back of your neck clipped. And then you hold your baby, put your baby against your body and you just grab this and you kind of thread it over your head. And now if you see at the back, it's already buckled and all I need to do is grab this strap over here, find the buckle and then buckle it over here. And then there's no need to reach all the way back. Um, and then I just tighten to the position that I want and grab this one over here. It just depends what's what's easier for you. You'll find your, your method that works best here. So in the beginning, I showed you that I always leave a little bit of webbing on this side as well, because you've got two areas where the webbing is coming out over here. So the re just to show you if it's a little bit difficult to see, there's webbing from the one side and there's webbing from this side. And the reason that I like to leave a little bit extra over here is for when you put your baby in, so say you start out and it's quite loose and now you want to tighten it, you pull this one to tighten and get your baby in position. 
when you want to take your baby out if you want to do it quickly sometimes your baby's niggly and you don't want them to start screaming you want to get them out quickly it's much easier if you've got a little bit of webbing on this side to loosen so you just put your thumb in here and you loosen from this side and you do that and you've got that extra webbing over here now and it's just a lot faster getting a baby in and out when you've got that extra webbing there this is just my little personal trick that i found because now i've got a lot of looseness i can quickly unclip i can take my baby out and i've still got the carrier around my waist and i can carry on another thing about our stage two carrier is you can still do the crisscross back instead of the capital h so in order to do that you're going to use each of these straps and they've got quite a lot of um, extra webbing here so when you're going to do a crisscross back you're going to pull this um, to so you've got a little bit of webbing at the end of the shoulder and this will be all the way out and you just leave that completely loose and then we do the same on the side just going to make sure we've got enough webbing here and pull all the way so you've got a little bit on the side and then you've got your buckle on this side now I'm going to grab my baby put my baby on my front and I would basically put this on exactly like I would with the stage one so I'm going to put one strap over cross arms reach back find the webbing and this comes across my back now and I can clip it in on this side and then tighten so what that looks like just make sure your webbing isn't twisted and that looks like that on that side and then you would do the same on this side so the, this is also a preference thing i prefer the capital h back but a lot of people do prefer a crisscross especially if they've got bad lower backs it just gives a different feeling of support crisscross it over and then this goes to this buckle and you tighten so i just want to show you it looks a little bit messy while i'm doing it here this baby's way too small for this carrier as well and there's not enough weight holding it in place so it is tricky so if you can see that you've got a nice crisscross difficult for me to see if you can see properly um, but it's a nice comfortable crisscross it might not look as neat as the other position but once you get your right foot you can see this strap would be the strap that was going across your back it's not a necessary strap now so if you find that this is a comfortable position you can just roll up the strap and you can see there's a little elastic tidier on the end here which you can use you can roll it all the way up and it can be tucked all the way in so it doesn't look as messy you don't have straps all over the show but basically that's how you would do the crisscross in the stage two it's actually very comfortable um i just find it quicker and easier with a toddler to have the h position but you totally are welcome to do this position if it's more comfortable for you it's also very quick and easy to get it off now if my baby starts crying i can do the same thing i can just unbuckle either side just like i would the stage one the only difference is now as you can hear the buckles hit the floor and you've got a carrier hanging on the floor here if you wanted to keep your carrier around your waist which is what a lot of moms do and um, what you can do then if you if you don't want the straps lying on the floor is then you can just buckle it up shorten the webbing and let it hang again like you would if it was in the H position. So let's talk about putting baby on your back in the stage two carrier. So it can be quite intimidating in the beginning to think that you're going to be able to do this by yourself, but it just takes a little bit of practice and then you will find your groove with this. So with the stage two, what we do to get baby on the back is a few ways I'm going to show you. The first way that you can do it is um, this is the way that a lot of moms like to start out doing it but i do find it a little bit finicky to do it this way is you basically start out with baby on your front already so i'm just going to put baby on me and you lift the carrier up and over them and you put your carrier on so this is the way that i put my carrier on i grab the buckle at the back over here and i click it in and now it's quite loose so we keep it loose so it's secure there, this, these buckles are done. So all the buckles are done, but they're very, very loose. And now what we do is we just slightly loosen the waistband and hold our baby's weight. Take one hand and put it through the shoulder strap and one hand and put it underneath like this. And now this is gonna allow me to scoot the carrier around, holding my baby's weight, 
never let going of le never letting go of your baby although it's very unlikely that your baby could fall to the floor you don't want them to have any sort of feeling of um, falling or like weightlessness as you move them around so don't completely let them go and let them hang like this it's not what the, the carrier is not designed to bear weight like that so just rather keep everything when everything's loose you're always holding your baby's weight scoot your baby around and you just do a little jump get them to scoot all the way around and you're basically going to swap arms so as you can see i'm just holding my baby's bum the whole time put this arm through this way swap arms and then put this arm through this way so now the carrier is on my baby's on my back and everything is still very loose so obviously now we've got to tighten so same thing we pull on this webbing and we just pull it and over here we pull it tight and you can see what that's done is it has brought the strap down across my chest and I cannot tighten this to whatever position I feel most comfortable with. And now obviously tighten the waistband and pull that across. So now I can feel my baby snug. However, this baby is definitely too small for this carrier, as I mentioned. So if you are putting a slightly more, if you are a petite person, and if your baby is like 10, 11 months and you feel like they're ready for the back carry position, but you feel when they're on your back that they are like um, leaning back, that is what these straps are for here again. Perfect fit adjusters. And this, you would, um, you need a little bit of help when your baby's on your back to get this right the first time. And then you can just leave it at that for um, the next time you put your baby on your back because it's difficult to pull this tight now when my baby's on my back. So this is just the first time you put your baby on your back uh, i can't do it <laughs> you definitely need help but that would help you where so this would fold underneath there and it would just be tighter and your baby would be nicely held against you so what you're looking for is your baby to be sitting in a position kind of like this and they can this baby again is too small but a bigger baby a taller baby would now be able to see over your shoulder okay so what i want to also show you is once they're on your back um, how to put the sleep hood on because this can sometimes happen your baby falls asleep while they are on your back and now their neck is hanging back um, because a baby would be slightly taller and they've fallen asleep and now they're like like that which obviously isn't great um, so there's a zip here I've mastered this technique of being able to do this well I had mastered it <laughs> when my son was younger but the better idea is if you think your baby's going to fall asleep is to start out with this hood outside of the pocket. Let's get it out. There we go. And then this is an elasticated hood. So if there's little loops here and if I tuck down, you can see how far it stretches. So if your baby falls asleep, sometimes you can, uh, depending on your baby, a baby might allow you to put the hood on when they're still awake. But often that irritates them and then they're going to like throw their head back and just get annoyed. So I would kind of like, you know, do the sh -sh 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 -sh, bounce around, walk around. Eventually baby falls asleep and you kind of feel yourself like leaning forward slightly doing the little mom dance. But now they, you want to be able to obviously stand up straight and carry on. But now they are leaning back on you. So what you do now is you just grab these two elastics over here, pull them right down and just choops over like that. And now it will hold your baby's head. So there is a, oh my goodness, I'm getting stuck here. There's a little clippy over here and you can just clip it in there. And then same thing on this side. You clip it in over there. And now baby will be held nicely against you. And it's made of a very breathable um, hemp fabric. So they can still breathe through there. There's no chance they're going to suffocate, especially at that older toddler age. Um, and as I said, this baby is too small, so it kind of looks like they, they don't have space, but a bigger baby would have a lot more space. There's a lot more stretch. There's more than likely going to kind of look like that, and there will be airflow going through there. So now I'm going to show you the hip scoot method for getting baby on your back. This method, you start out already with the carrier on your, in the back carry position on your body. And you put your baby on your hip, and you're just going to scoot them around. When you start practicing this, please make sure you've got somebody um, near to help you or do it over a bed because this method is obviously not a, a method where there's any other bit of the carrier helping until you've got the baby on you. So 
your arms are the only thing holding your baby in place and I don't want any babies falling. This does take practice. There's many YouTube tutorials on how to do a hip scoot with your baby um, with back carry positions. So feel free to go and Google and get some more tips and advice, but this is my hip scoot method on how I do it. So basically you scoot your baby around as far as you can, holding them in this kind of hip position, stick your hip out, and now you're gonna swap arms. This arm comes and holds your baby. Make sure you've got your baby. This arm goes around and you scoot your baby over onto your back like this, and you bring them to the middle, and you're leaning right forward, but now bear in mind that if you've got a baby that's a niggly baby or has never done this before, they could easily sit up and fall backwards. There's nothing holding them in place, which is why I really do um, just discourage starting with this method as the first method for getting baby on your back because there is a risk of falling. So just be aware that it is much easier to, or much safer to do the first method that I showed you when you're starting out with back carries. This is definitely a more experienced method of getting baby on your back once you are comfortable with this you'd be leaning forward and you just basically pull it up on both sides continue holding your baby your arm is the only thing holding your baby in place until the carrier is on and secured and you basically give a little shake a little jiggle and get that carrier nice and tight um you are oops you are then going to secure this buckle in the chest area over there and now you need to tighten both sides and your baby is on your back nicely so that is the hip scoot method again safety first make sure you practice this over a bed or with someone else there it generally works better with babies that are at the age to understand communication so you can say okay sweetie mommy's going to put you on your back now hold on to mommy you're leaning forward and they obviously don't want to fall so this is generally a method for older babies Now I'm going to show you a method called the Santa Toss. <laughs> I don't know who named this, but if you Google, there are videos on how to do a Santa Toss with your baby. It sounds terrible. Basically, you've got your baby sitting. You start with the carrier on, like in the hip scoot method. You are crisscrossing under their arms. So I'm going to hold baby like this. So you take your baby from a seated position, crisscross your arms like this. And it's often like a fun thing you'll see. They've got baby stand. Even baby, if, if um, your toddler is standing, you grab them by their arms crisscross and you whoops over the back like that so it can be like fun for them now you've got their arms over here like this and they're kind of hanging on your back then you lean forward you say hold on to mommy legs over and it's the same thing of just flipping it up and over them and securing in the exact same way that you would do with the hip scoot method and they're on your back so that is actually the fastest way to do it it became my go-to method when my son understood he was going on my back. But again, it's for more experienced, more confident baby wearers and for older babies that understand communication. So now your baby's asleep and you want to go sit on the couch and you can't because you've got a sleeping baby on your back. So how to get your baby off your back once they're asleep. So this does take a lot of practice. Um, some babies when they fall asleep, you know, they're like in a sleep coma and it's easy to take them off If you're if you've got someone there It might help you to have someone else help you put the get the baby off your back But what I found was the easiest thing to do was I was I would hold my I would go to my bed I would never attempt to get my baby into a cot or anything like that um, from a sleeping position on the back if I want them to go to sleep I would go and sit on my own bed I would loosen the waistband like this, just loosen it a little bit. I would unclip over here, but holding my baby all the time, because obviously now there's nothing else holding my baby. Um, I'm sitting on my bed now, and I would and take my one arm out, take this arm out, baby's still asleep, baby's still asleep. And then I'm sitting on my bed, and I'm very, very slowly going back like this, and just letting my baby fall onto the bed inside the carrier like this. Once they are on the flat surface on the bed, I then very quietly unclip so it comes off me and get it through the safety elastic. I mean, this is obviously a lot easier to put the baby on the counter. So it's kind of like this now. Take it off. And now, as you can see with this baby, the baby's kind of in position 
like this in the carrier asleep. And if you go to our highlights bubble on Instagram, you will see we have hundreds of babies sleeping like this on a bed in their baby carrier because now they're comfy. If you're going to try and take them all out of this and move them somewhere else, they're going to feel the difference in temperature and the fabric change and they're going to wake up. So it does take some practice, but if you can get that right, it's so great because they're comfortable and now you don't have to carry their weights around while they're sleeping. Um, another thing is a lot of people think, oh, this is crazy. Like, why don't we just sleep train or get our baby to sleep another way? The beauty of baby wearing is that with older toddlers, the best thing for them, the most, their happiest place is to fall asleep on a person. And when, if you've been baby wearing from newborn and you get your baby into this habit, habit by the time it's your toddler's time for like their afternoon nap, it can take you two to three minutes to literally get them to sleep if they're tired enough. And if you get the timing right, and um, that's a great thing to be able to achieve if you've just got to do like a four or five minute walk around the house in the baby carrier, babies asleep on your back, get them off onto the bed and then they sleep there for two hours, hopefully. So that's really, really useful. Um, they're not going to become, they're not going to be baby wearing when they are seven years old, because that's what people tend to think. Eventually your toddler is going to not be comfortable. They're going to say, I don't want to be squashed up. And they're going to want to lie in a bed or lie in the cot, drink their bottle or whatever your go-to thing is for um, or whatever your, your toddler's personality is for going to sleep. So don't worry about it being a forever thing. Um, my child is six and we do not have a problem. <laughs> so how to breastfeed in our stage two baby carrier. So this carrier is a little bit different to the stage one in terms of how you get your baby to breastfeeding position and there's a few ways to do it. The first way which a lot of moms like breastfeeding moms might start out with the carrier tightened over here so they would actually wear the carrier as a default position with these perfect fit adjusters to the tightest position so basically what that looks like is that kind of tucks in like that and it's still nice and comfy for baby but when you are using the carrier from the beginning you have it in this tight position if you're going to do that because i've just tightened it bear in mind that this strap over here is now too high it's not going to be very comfortable for me because the weight is sitting on my neck and not in the H position over here. So if you are planning on breastfeeding a lot, make sure that you just slide this clip. This is a slider and it slides down the webbing and you make sure that you've, when you're wearing your baby in the normal uh, position before you breastfeed, that that strap is sitting over there. And then when it's time to breastfeed, all you have to do is the buckle. It's on this side over here. Loosen the buckle slightly so that you can drop the carrier down. You just loosen these completely. Got all that extra space. Shimmy your baby down to the position that you need them to be at. If you need any extra space, you can loosen the sides here. That will give you even more way to go down. Get your baby on the boob and then you can just tighten your waistband and tighten it so that baby, you can breastfeed on the go without holding your baby. And then if you want a little bit of privacy, you can just grab the hood here out the pocket and you can cover baby up and you can just clip this onto the clip over here sometimes the babies like to be able to see out a little bit when they're um when they're feeding so they can have a little bit of head movement but if you've got a baby that latches on and you know just kind of sits there for 20 minutes you can do both both sides as well and you can kind of breastfeed and walk around like this and no nobody would know and then the other way to do it, if you don't want to use these straps, is just basically your baby now wants to feed, you loosen on the waistband and you loosen as much as you want to over here so you've got space. Yeah. Got to see what I'm doing here. Loosen it. You see now this side I didn't have enough to loosen too far, so then I can just loosen over here. So this is why you've got the webbing on both sides. Whatever technique works best for you, you can use that. You just loosen, you'd shimmy baby down to whichever side. And then once you've got baby latched on, again, you can just pull in this webbing to tighten so you can keep them in that position because you can see there's so much extra webbing here. And I don't want to hold my baby's weight while I'm feeding. I want my baby to be supported by the baby carrier. And then again, this is very loose. Just tighten this nicely like that. And then you can use this for privacy. So you can see I'm not holding baby at all. I can breastfeed, I can walk around. And as soon as baby's finished, I can just reverse those steps, pull baby back up and tighten again.